We read the book of 2 Kings chapter 8 from verse 1 to 6. As it is the custom of this house for us to stand for the reading of God's word, I'm going to encourage us to rise on our feet. And at the count of three, we're going to read together one, two, three. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, and thine household and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord had called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha had done. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life. That behold, that the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My Lord, O king, this is the woman and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land even until now somebody help me shout say i take my place our father we ask in the next few minutes that you make a word and your will known unto us father let there be known of any man but all of you father we ask oh god that you do what only you can do have your way father let a lover of the lord thunder a louder amen lift up your right hand say i believe the word of god Say, Lord, direct my path. Say, give life to my destiny. Say, my father, let my life experience it turn around by your word. Let your amen turn the louder. Please, before you take your seat, please find four or five persons around you. Give them a high five and tell them congratulations. Congratulations, 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 congratulations. And if you are able to do it to five persons, please help me take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Like you really know that it's going to be your season of back-to-back -back congratulations. Can I hear someone thunder a louder? Amen. Now, people of God, if the devil has a strategy, is to make a nonsense of every single thing that the word of God has spoken about you. And so, people of God, originally designed by God from the day you gave your life to Christ, was a grand plan by God himself to take you to a place, or rather to already place you in a place where you truly belong. Every prophecy of God. Now, people of God, God does not start to finish. He only finishes to start. Now, if that makes sense, let me break it down that God doesn't start to finish but God already finishes to start so which means that the place that God is taking you to already he has already taken you there and so what we are doing in this service to say Lord if you know the place that you have taken me to let there be a manifestation of it this is why I say that if the devil has any grand plan it was to ridicule the word of prophecy over your life so you are in the place where you're looking at what the word of God says about you and then you're looking at your reality and they don't match and so people of God this is us coming in the service and say listen we are taking our place it is our place we are not begging for it we are already seated with Christ in the heavenly places he said none of these diseases shall come near you he says I know the thoughts that I think towards you they are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and an expected end so this is already my place so if I'm in this service and say I take my place I'm already saying he's done it already I'm aligning with what he has done on. I'm aligning with what he has said. I'm aligning with the word he spoke over my life. If you understood what I said, can I hear you turn the fire? Listen, whether they are demon spirit system structures, policies, or anything at all that said you will not be at your place. Record or they should watch out for you. As far as heaven and earth remains, I command let such structures let them be broken by fire. I said, let them be broken. 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 Let your aim and thunder. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. There's a woman God wants me to talk to. Hear me clearly as I hear the Lord. What happened to you will not happen to your children. 
That's what the Lord said I should tell you because you are scared. Lord, with this thing I'm seeing, is it possible that what happened to me will happen to my children? I announced that the siege has been broken. We draw a bloodline. It will not happen. Let your amen turn the louder. So people of God, how did this woman arrive at her place? People of God, oh my goodness, too many things to say. But please permit me to just begin from somewhere. Understand that the prophet had come to tell this woman, oh my goodness, God, I want to say this, this is coming, this is coming. And the prophet had come to tell this woman and said to this woman, listen, a famine is coming. A famine is coming. Don't forget that this woman had had an encounter. This is the popular woman of Shunem right? The Shunammite woman. This woman had had an encounter with the man of God. And at this point in time, understand that the woman of God did not ask the prophet for any prophecy. Did not ask the prophecy, show me something. But listen, because God is bound by the sacrifice you've made. People of God, it is not just a one-off blessing is going to attract. It's going to be a legacy and generational encounter and outpouring of his goodness upon your life. So the man of God just rushes into the woman and says to the Man, listen, famine is coming. So you're going to find somewhere else to go and stay. I'm going to come down to that. Cut the entire long story short. Then the woman after seven years comes back. I know Sierra is beginning to bless me myself. After seven years comes back and says to the king, listen, I'm back, uh, but I, I can't find my land. I, I can't find my land. I can't find my house. And the pro woman, while they were talking, the prophet, um, the, the prophet's servant was being asked by the king, tell me all the things that Elisha has done. And then while he was relaying the matter, all of a sudden the woman comes up and the the servant said, look at the woman I'm telling you about. And all that. And the prophet said, are you serious? Okay now, let us make everything right for this woman. And the woman, the man of God, um, the king rather, appointed an officer to make sure that all that was a woman was restored. Am I communicating? Or the officer, you know what an officer is? You know, like a correct person, a, a military person uh, brought someone who was going to enforce and execute exactly um, the restoration of the woman's houses or house and land, as the case may be. Hear me clearly, people of God. Seven years had come and gone. The woman was back. People of God, seven is the number of perfection. Am I communicating? Seven is the number of perfection. Seven years had come and gone in the place of perfection, yet she did not have her house. Like, how can the scripture be so real, but I can't see the evidence? How can I pray so vehemently? How can, how can I believe the word? How can I speak the word? But yet there's no manifestation in my house. And as soon as the woman came back and said, Oh king, seven years has come. Seven. Perfect. I'm in a season where things should be working right now. And the king says, When there is an opposition of perfection, I'm going to send you a military man. So, we are going to make sure that, because you're not going to back through it. You're going to walk through it. I didn't hear you shall fire. You're, you're, you're not going to, people of God, you're kind of a You think your phone calls will make a difference. Somebody help me shall say, let the fire fall. See, wherever that there is a stiff opposition against what God is doing in your life, can I hear you turn and say, let the fire fall. Wherever there is a hand holding what belongs to you, can I hear you shout this and let the fire fall? I wish you can make it more forceful. Turn and let the fire fall. Turn very loud and let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Lift up your right hand and say, Today, whatsoever that is due to manifest in my life that has not yet happened, what are you waiting for? Say, right now, ready. By fire, up here, by fire, up here, by fire, up here, by fire, 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 open your mouth, recobotona, a shabada, a cotonia, racataba, latobea, a recodea, a shade, a mecoto, a rabababa, recotoba, a shade, a cato. A labia, a copy, a sata, a labia, a quarter. Let your aim and turn the louder. Take your seat. I see that, but I see. So, when a season is ripe and the evidence has not come, 
We don't go through those seasons with emotions. Never forget this. When a season is ripe and the fruits of the season has not yet been seen, we don't go through that season with emotion. Pastor, I'm crying. This should have been, no sir. He sent an officer. He said, listen, woman, we don't cry about seasons that have no connection. We begin to issue commands. We begin to issue degrees. We begin to overturn what the enemy has laid as a foundation. This is what it is. And that's what he said to the woman. He said, listen, I know your land is still there. Your house is still there. However, what I need you to understand is that when a season is ripe and there is no evidence for it, you issue command. We don't go through the season with emotions. We walk through the season. Am I communicating? Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, we walk through the season. People of God, do you realize that in warfare, the first time you shot a gun is not even the first time that the war is over. In a battle, the first time you shot an arrow, even if you like, let kill the captain, it doesn't mean that the warfare is over. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So, sir, you're going to keep warring through this. And listen, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. So, we're not fighting to win. We're fighting because we have already won. And so, this is the mindset that governs what we do and how we do spiritual warfare. Am I communicating? So, people of God, parking this one in one corner of your mind. People of God, remember, if you've been crying too much, stop crying. If you've been complaining too much, stop complaining. You're going to stand in the place of warfare. You're going to stand in the place of letting the devil know this far and no further. People of God, you can imagine that testimony. You go back and they tell you there's still cancer. You come back again and say, I say I'm still praying. I'm still praying. I know that this report must say, ah, 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 ah. Where any? Right? Like, is, is that, is, are you okay? Are you all right? And then you come back and say, no, no, no. I'm still insisting on people of God. When you become restless, you will break the yoke of your neck. From the time of John the Baptist up until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And only the violent will take it by force. If you understood this, let me hear you shall fire. I need the fire to be louder at the overflow. Turn the fire. Somebody help me shut fire. Let me hear you turn the fire. Take your seat. People of God, help people take their place. How people take their place. People of God, let me say this. Do you understand that there were people who were never going to complain that they lost their place? There were people who were never going to complain. Like, if you look at this, if I ask you, let's do some um, 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 scriptural um, um, deductions here. There were people who never lost their place. If you read that scripture again, like we read, there were people who never lost their place. If you read from verse 1 to the place we stopped, the woman came back and met the king and said, the king, I lost my place. So, you are telling the king you lost your place. That means the king, there was famine in the land. The king did not lose his place. Gehazi was there telling the king what has happened. So Gehazi, by extension, Elisha, did not lose their place. People of God, when you understand the nature and the mode of a royal priesthood, you'll find out that kings that are prophetic don't lose their places. So no worship. Kings that are prophetic, they don't lose their place. So you are a kingu. You are a kingu. See, I know you are still starting in that career, but you are a king. So let me tell you how kings enforce their thrones in their sphere of influence is that they become prophetic. Kings that shut their mouth in this kingdom remain small. Kings that don't call for the things which be not as though they were end up as non-entities so sir a city where everybody was running losing their place see king and he has a gist in, like everything was fine he said hey I beg tell me that thing where your boss don't do now 
That's what tell me. What, what, what is it? Ha. <laughs> okay, I don't even know this thing I'm telling you. Oga, my oga, my oga. That's what. So, so you people were not touched by famine. I am no super. I need you to know that kings are not touched. Please give me my key. There's a song I want to sing. Give my key. If you know my key. Is that my key? <clears throat> mm. There's a song in my Okay, let me sing this so that you can join my key. You come from royalty and aristocratic dynasty. The goal of the enemy is that you don't know who you are. Hey. So I need I need you to understand this. Kings that keep quiet will end up as non entities. Sir, it took the woman seven years. She stayed out. But there was a king who sat down. Famine will come. Famine will go. Nothing will happen. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. Economy can go up. Economy can come down. But the Lord will preserve his own. Hmm. Many a day that I've said of my soul, there is no help for me in God. But thou, O oh Lord, are the shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. If you understand it, can you turn that in louder? Amen. People of God, take your seat. A situation where a woman was leaving, but royalty stayed back. Royalty stayed back. Prophetic stayed back. People of God, we don't move for famine. Famine moves for us. I might communicate. You're a king. Don't stop talking. You're a king. Don't stop prophesying. You're a king. The Bible says, we are the word of a king is. There is power. You're a king. Don't stop declaring the mandate of God over you. You're a king. Let nobody judge you by what is going on right now. I might communicate. And people of God, these people stayed back. But I need to say this before I move on. They seem to me twice this woman was going to experience restoration. And people of God, the Lord began to say to me, notice the pattern of restoration that took place in the woman, woman's life. I'm going somewhere. And I need you to get this. Because that's where some of us may not be able to take our place until you understood this. So if you know who this woman is, and from the scripture we read, would you tell me the first thing that was restored in this woman's life? Huh? Huh? Right. The life of her son. Somebody say life. life. Say of her son. Life. Now say life. life. Shout life. life. Shout life. life. Shout life. life. Now pack that in one corner of your mind. Now the second thing that was restored was what? We're looking at the pattern, right? The second thing was what? 
her land and house. The first thing that was restored was what? Life of her son. Life. The second thing that was restored was what? Houses and land. People of God, look at the chronological progression or chronological narrative of the story. Her house and land was not first restored before the life of her son. It was life before houses and lands. God says, don't seek for places in lands and houses when you've not found a place in the life that I give. There is a generation who are not interested in the life, the zoe that he gives, but they want lands and houses. If you walked into this church and all I keep talking about is lands, houses, land, houses, without my speaking to you about life. After a while, stand up and walk away because that's not the way to go. Because you know what? It takes life to bring the houses and lands that he gives. It takes life, the God kind of life, to preserve that Omakano Siba Ladasha. You're going to face situations in life that houses cannot do anything about. That lands cannot, people of God, having done what I am doing, I have met people from all over the world. I have met people from this, I mean, over the past week, you know, I was stunned by a major, major, face in Hollywood that reached out to me and then spoke about how NSPPD, people of God, by the time she said, I've been through things, when I mean major, major person in Hollywood and she said, this is what has happened to me for two years but just, if not for NSPPD if not for NSPPD the first thing I said to myself, so Hollywood, as it is in all your wood There's no fire. You gotta find a life so that it can bring the houses, so that it can sustain the. Listen, people of God, even if it doesn't bring the houses and land, there's something about his life in you. There's, there's, there's something, I mean, there's something it does. There, there's a fulfillment, there's an assurance it gives you. Watch that woman. Don't be seeking for places in lands and houses when you have not found a place in the life that he gives. This is where it all begins from. Did you hear what I just said? Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. I hope I'm not to live. It's me, your oh Lord. I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees, crying out to you. And so people of God, he's got to get the life, he's going to fix the life. And then you can fix that. And I do know there might just be people who are here and you're saying, Pastor, to be honest, I don't have the God kind of life. To be honest, He's not formed in me. Jesus is not formed in me. To be honest, I'm still mixing these two things together. A bit of God here, a bit of the world here, and all that. He wants to help you. He wants to help you. Wherever you are, if you belong to this category, just wherever you are, as you are seated there, say after me, say, Lord, say, forgive me. Say, I need your kind of life. Say, Father, I reject the old works. Say, Father, I receive you in my life as my personal Lord and Savior. 
Say, Father, may today be a new day. The beginning of a major transition in my life. If you understand the thunder in louder, amen. And so people of God, understand that this is where it all began from. And from there, it was somebody shall say, I take my place. Can you say it again? Say, I take my place. Interestingly, people of God, as I get ready to tidy up, child, this one looks like a divine setup. It looks like a, the king goes out, tell me the things that Elisha has done. And then, a Gehazi began, ah, why should it be at that point in time? What you are going to be telling now is the story of that woman. Next thing, as you were telling the story of that woman, the woman showed which kind of divine arrangement is this. Hey, listen, oh, when God wants to take men to new places, there's a kind of divine arrangement that defies human wonders. Jesus, you've not seen this God. If God sets up something to favor you, can I pray for you? In 14 days, beginning from right now, let there be a divine arrangement for your manifestation. I wish your amen will thunder louder. Let your amen rise higher. Let the Lord arrange. 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 To make you laugh. Receive it of the Lord. Receive it of the Lord. Receive it of the Lord. Let your amen thunder louder. Check your seat. Every work of God would always have a face. Gehazi was talking about the works of God. And the woman came out and said, I am the face of the work he has done. So even right now, I know he wants to do other things. But Lord, you know, there's a song many years ago that we used to sing, you know, Lord, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Because I know he's about to do another one. Lord, whatever. So, you see, there are stories that will be told a few days from now. Do you know, do you know, there was just one woman that got a breakthrough that were in billions. Do you know there's a family that celebration hits their home? Do you know that the testimony we talk about, the testimony you are going to live here to share today, it has a face. So we are saying, Lord, as you are about to do new things, can you put my face? Lord, as, as you are as about to heal, you are about to deliver, you are about to help, you are about to, Lord, please, please, don't do it without me. Put my face in what, Lord, I know you are good, you are great, you are kind. You do wondrous works, wonders without number. Abba, please put my face. I know you will favor someone. I know you will help someone. I know you will cause someone to celebrate. I know you will give someone a meaning to their life. Father, put my face in what you are doing. And people of God, as I get ready to tidy up, the king said, she came asking, Karadosia, asking for, give me back my land and my house. That's what he kept asking. But the king said, listen, that's a wrong thing to ask. Because that's not the way the king answers. The king said, I'm aware that there are fruits that grew on that land for the past seven years. He said, don't give her just back her land. Everything that has grown on that land. In other words, gather her seven years. 
Give it to her. Try. Where she was supposed to be. Put it all together. Deliver it to Omar Saka. The season she was idle. The season where she was asking, Lord, where is this going to come from? You are going to gather, gather everything together. Can I pray for someone with the loudest amen? I hear Kopo do say, as your amen will thunder, let the Lord gather years you lost. Let it be delivered to you. At the same time, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, let it be compressed. Let it be compressed. Let it be compressed. Let it be delivered. At the same time, let your amen thunder seven times. Somebody amen thunder say, I am at my place. Did you feel like God spoke to you in this service? Did you feel like God spoke to you? Can you turn that louder? Amen. Amen. Would you put together your offerings, your tithes, and your partnership? If you know that today was your service, I know that you'll be more intentional with your offerings, your tithes, and your partnership. Make them a wave offering before the Lord. It's room to joy. We stand to give to God. Again, it's a protocol of the house. You don't need me to remind you, do you? Make it a wave offering before the Lord. Make it a wave offering. Make it a wave offering. Shadeba lo deba sindera. Wave it before the Lord. We give you the glory, Jesus. Kai. Lord, some have lost years. They've asked, where are the fruits of the years? If an earthly king can give back the fruits, Lord, let the evidence of the years your people have lost, at the sound of their amen, let it be given back to them. You had to fix life before you fixed property. Our hands are raised to you. Our God fix our lives and fix every other thing around us. We love you Jesus. In Jesus name.